brother and I basically just spent three hours on Red Dead Online, uh, looking at an online map as we rode around the world collecting tarot cards, uh, and then exchanged <laughs> them so that we could get a faster horse, which would allow us to traverse a similar route in the future <laughs> much quicker. Collect more tarot cards. Duh. Exactly. Like, I don't love it. And it made me question my existence, and yet I kind of want to do it again. Okay. Happy Monday. Hey, hey. We're doing it. <laughs> it's a slow one today, I think. Oh, man. It's going to be a slow one. It's, yeah, uh, I'm with you. Uh, yeah. It's all right. It's a Monday. I got an email back from someone that was like, Hey, I know it's been five days and feels like a month, but like, are you still available for this thing? And I was like, yeah, it's only been five days, but I'm with you. Um, oh, you're talking about the thing that you're going to be working on next week. Uh, yeah. The, the vaccine website stuff. Okay. Which is really cool. But, uh, are you, are you, can you talk about it a little bit? Like, are you, uh, are you yeah. able to talk about it? I don't, yeah. I don't know what would be secret. Um, I'm, I'm going to work with the U S digital service no u.s digital resource which is like u.s digital service but for volunteers only um, um okay um, u.s digital response there you go that one yeah response nice yeah basically and like- croaky one like a jeff and dom fan got you into it do i understand that correctly yeah that's right yeah they called him up via some thought by connection, I think. So uh-huh. sort of, I'm sort of a, a the friend of a friend here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to do like a two week volunteer stint with them to fix some websites, mm-hmm. get some COVID vaccines to people. Seem, seems like a really good use of my time this year. Yeah. It sounds like an excellent <laughs> use of your time. Indeed. Um, that means then uh, schedule wise, yeah. you'll be off stream or I guess will be off off stream for how long? Uh, probably two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, the first two weeks of February. Okay, yes. The longest break we will ever take. We are, that's pretty, it's pretty long for us, right? Yeah. That wasn't an intent, yeah, that's pretty good, right? That wasn't an intentional rhyme, but, um, (laughs) it happens. Yeah, and, uh, uh, it'll be great, like, I mean. Unless you want to work on the website on stream. (laughs) Oh, that would be very, very interesting. Yeah. If I can, I will. (laughs) Or I'll uh, like live stream something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do it, but it wasn't a it wasn't a serious it wasn't a serious suggestion. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but also, if you like want to hang out with Stephen on stream, you could do that too. I guess. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's cool. I'm happy to take the break and just work on the game or whatever. Yeah. Or or just play Red Dead Online. I, the all consuming clothing simulator. Yes, exactly. Do 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 you realize what I was doing on Red Dead Online this past weekend? Yesterday night, even. Were you like trying to buy a new hat? I was trying to buy a new horse. Okay. So it's a bigger deal than a hat. Uh, but it was one of those like you do drugs so you can work to buy more drugs kind of <laughs> kind mm-hmm. of cycles. Um, <clears throat> basically, I became a collector. That's one of the roles you can oh, no. assume in that game. Yeah. I can already see where this is going. So wait, do you beat up other player characters to collect on stuff? Uh, I, unfortunately I'm not a debt collector. Mm. Uh, that would be interesting. The closest to that is a bounty hunter, which I would also like to become. Okay. Um, but in order to assume any of these roles, you have to pay what is known as 15 gold bars. Um, and gold bars are like, what's the destiny currency that oh, uh, you pay for? Is it like <laughs> bright engrams or something? Destiny has the most bullshit names. Yeah. But I think it's bright um, engrams. Destiny has a currency <laughs> That I think you only get when you, yeah, I think you only get it, and you, you use it to buy, like, the premium, like, emotes and stuff like that, right? Yeah, Ever something? It's from the Ever Lady. It's been, I, it's I been a know. long time since it, we it's been a long. Yeah. It's been at least a year or two since I've played Destiny. Um, so, gold is that, because there's also just, like, regular dollars, and that's what you use to buy your regular pedestrian stuff, but to actually assume a role, you have to pay 15 gold bars, which would take you like a month of solid play to accumulate unless you pay for it, like with real money. And so I spent 10 bucks okay. and I got 25 gold bars, 15 of which immediately went to assuming the collector role. 
And the collector role is basically like any open world game. You like run around and there's like a tiny pixel you can click on. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh my God, it's a shell, you know, or oh my God, it's a Korok or, or whatever it is that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, it, Red Dead Online's world is filled with these things. So there are lots of these like enterprising, brilliant people who have put together these like amazing like front end experiences, which are essentially just treasure maps of Red Dead, Red Dead Online, and you can say, "I want to collect these things, these like this specific subset of things for the collector role," and the map will like do the whole like NP complete traveling salesman algorithm and calculate a route for you to to navigate. This, Ooh, amazing this space, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's really impressive. So. My brother and I basically just spent three hours on Red Dead Online uh, looking at an online map as we rode around the world collecting tarot cards uh, and then exchanged them so that we could get a faster horse, which would allow us to traverse a similar route in the future <laughs> much quicker. Collect more tarot cards. Duh. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. That's that's extremely weird. Uh Yeah. I kind of love it. And it made me question my existence, and yet I kind of want to do it again, So, <laughs> if that so makes any sense. You, you paid real money to get a fake job in a video game. <laughs> That's every video game, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, it's a good point. That's a really, yeah. really good point. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, some jobs are, are worse than others, and I, I do think that running around a, a digital world collecting tarot cards is a pretty bad job, and yet I <laughs> paid money to do it. <clears throat> oh god that's just really funny <laughs> well uh you're you're really not selling me on jumping in the red dead uh pool let me tell you yeah i i can't say anything good about that game and yet i want to play it do you, do you know what i mean totally it, it, it's a, it's an accumulation simulator that's mm-hmm. what it is you see a little number go up ah uh, that, that those are compelling I, I was trying to think of like how we could have a compulsion loop like that in manchester hmm should we have like a little game design conversation right now? What yeah, would like? what would that look like? Would we feel good about ourselves? I mean, I feel fine about that, actually. Uh, it's not going to be Farmville, right? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're also not going to have anybody pay us for this game, I think. Or even if we did, it wouldn't be microtransaction related, right? Yeah. No, I want I want the cookie clicker loop. It's free, but you yeah. got to make that number go up. At best, it would be Patreon, right? Oh, That's yeah. Cool. yeah. Definitely support us on Patreon. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I think the, the problem is, is we want Bolo and Bolo. That gameplay was very much based on like how equal everybody is. Mm-hmm. But the, the the idea that excites me is to have like a bunch of varieties of gameplay. I guess maybe 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 we're just going to become League of Legends or something like that, right? Because you can basically mm. like different characters can can play different roles oh i like that and i'm <clears throat> you know B- bolo as the starting point i'm really not opposed to just like walking in the other direction too like i feel like we've got like a nice foundation with a with a rich history but also like we can do whatever we want <laughs> yeah um and, and essentially the accumulation thing is you need some kind of like action rpg element to it uh the other the other game that comes to mind obviously is hades where uh there's kind of one way to play but there's also six different ways to play do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Hmm. Um, and maybe there's just like a bunch of cool weapons you can get in in yeah. Manchester. Uh, ESK1404 in the chat. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey. Says MOBAs are definitely the, the reference for combining numbers going up with a flat starting point. Yeah. Maybe we should play some MOBAs. I, I have never played League of Legends, and maybe that's my problem. Would we consider... Uh, 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 I can't remember the name of the freaking game. Fortnite to be a, a MOBO. Oh, I kind of do in, in like yeah. some different modes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Fortnite is actually, uh, we're not going to have hats or cool costumes in this game, I don't think. Unless we find like the most brilliant tank designer in the world. I mean, hey, hats are kind of cool. It worked for Team Fortress. Yeah. Um, but uh, Fortnite... I haven't played it, but I should. Although, like, it just seems like a like a big investment. Like, I just like I don't want to like. Dude, I'm get telling into you, it. me, me, you, uh, your brother and your brother in law would be a good Fortnite team. It would be fun to play with other humans that I know. Yeah, I'm so bad at shooters, but any at any rate, um, 
uh, you're you're a, a player running around and you shoot things mm-hmm. like a tank driving around shooting things, but you can also build things, right, mm-hmm. to uh, to assist you in shooting things. That's correct. Yeah, and that's basically the the, the gameplay that we're going for, mm-hmm. right? I, I can imagine, I can maybe see like uh, having some sort of resource limitation where you can buy more, like you have like two inventory slots and you're unlocking things to fill those slots for like gun and builder maybe, things you can build, things you can shoot, but they are, like every, everything is like a trade-off, like there's the powerful gun that goes slow and like you earn progression is being able to buy more things and like build out your character as you want but also yeah. ooh, look at that stretch but also like it's not a it's not a like strictly like are you seeing this on stream right now I just totally, like I the totally weight am. of the cube it almost feels like there's something weird with our projection math yeah a little bit huh this is the things that i should ask steve about is just like why are we dumb you know like why are we <laughs> why why do we suck <laughs> uh, we don't but that does not this that does not seem like a cube in any Realistic. No, I'm I'm with you on that one. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about game design, yeah. right? Uh, well, like, before we get into shaders and graphics. Yeah, I, I love the idea of a customizable player yes. that is not necessarily more or less powerful, but that there are things to unlock that are different. Yeah, I very much like the customized player. Uh, we talked about Scorched Earth, did we not? Scorched Earth. Oh, it's been a while. The mother of all games. Uh... It is one of these tank games, mm-hmm. artillery games, you know, where you basically have two variables, your angle and your power, mm-hmm. and you shoot people, mm-hmm. and you don't move anywhere. It's, like, turn-based. It's a hot seat game. Do you ever play a hot seat game where you basically, like, one person is at the keyboard, and then you go oh, to the next man. person? Oh, man, that's been a while. Yeah. Um, so Scorched Earth is dope, and when you finish a level, people make money based on, like, how well it did. Hmm. And then they can buy increasingly interesting weapons. Like this is a Merv. See, this is this is just uh, this is worms. <laughs> yeah, uh, I suspect that this game precedes worms. Oh, ab- some absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To the degree that I actually don't know from worms, I've never played it. Huh. Uh, but uh, this had a cool mechanic where you could just like get different weapons, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking. There should be a lot of different ways to like play this game, right? Mm-hmm. We're, right now, we have these kind of like slow missiles. Essentially, they're they're rockets, they're, they're artillery. But like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a railgun? I'm mean, really into this like early '90s BattleTech idea of a railgun. You know, <clears throat> what did BattleTech call the railguns? I think they called them like a uh, Goss rifle or something really cool. Oh yeah, Goss rifle, mass drivers. Yes, Mass Driver. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's Old classic. school sci fi <laughs> weapons. Imagine there was a gun where you had to click and hold it, and it charged up, and then you let go. So it's almost like a bow mechanic in a modern game. <sighs> yeah, I like it. And you let go, and. <clears throat> but the thing is, like, it wouldn't be a slow projectile like this. It would just basically immediately hit whatever you were targeting. <laughs> <clears throat> Wouldn't that be dope? That'd be really that would actually cool. be too powerful in this game because this is like a cursor-based aiming, and you can basically hit things perfectly. Right? Dep- depends how fast the tanks are moving around, though. It is true. Um, oh, right. You'd have to. It's a, it's a challenge of holding your mouse over some over mm-hmm. another tank. Yeah, yeah. The the instant shot is like that's its own challenge. The other thing that you could do with a weapon like that is that the cursor becomes locked when you uh, there's like a certain amount of time that you have to wait. That's actually sort of like the middle ground where let's say it only takes half a second to charge up and fire and it hits instantaneously, but you have to lead your target. Mm. Um, anyway, be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of cool weapons like that. There's there. You could have a homing rocket that will follow, will follow people that are driving around, but it can only turn a certain amount in a certain amount of time so they are technically kind of dodgeable yeah see there's a there's a bunch of fun shit to do in there i like this so I, much stuff i like a right? lot of that yeah yeah that's gonna be really yeah. cool um and then with like building things you could have a mine mm-hmm. you could lay mines down that are invisible uh yeah. mines that are proximity and they kind of pop up and chase after you oh man 
And how much fun will that all will that all be to to to, to sort of implement? I think I think all of that is going to be super duper fun, and also gives us like lots of ways to make the multiplayer interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The game kind of designs itself, I think. Yeah, uh, and I like like uh, it's interesting. It's not gonna it's not gonna be Bolo, so. <laughs> mm. and I think that's good because. Bolo already existed, and we're gonna make our own game. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, ESK fourteen oh four back in the chat. Uh, there's a choice. Uh, TF two, you get side grade equipment. Yeah, yeah. With long term play. Uh, interesting. What? 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 So, Team Fortress has what? Like side grades. Like I remember, like you. you could side have, grade. Yeah, you could have a, a. I remember the pyro could have like a shotgun or like a flare gun, and the flare gun was like a, a projectile shotgun that shot one. Thing, but let the target on fire in a really cool way. Got it. Uh, it looks like side grade is also has has entered the Fortnite world as oh, well. Yeah. Um, uh, and they also say that Dota and Arts, you build upgrades as you go for the individual match, which yeah, is like the sort of. I wonder if that makes like Dota almost almost roguelite in that respect. Yeah. Um. I I think there's also just like the uh you know. Starcraft is another big inspiration for us, right? And, and mm-hmm. Starcraft has a notion that, like, every level you kind of start at the bottom of the tech tree and have to build up from there. Yeah, definitely. And there's certainly an aspect of that that we could, that we could employ with, with this game as well. Right. Man, there's, oh, there's so much we can do. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should make our graphics non-janky, though, because they're pretty janky um, at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> let's, let's take a look at unjanking some stuff. Okay, let's unjank it. Okay. Um, shaders. Okay, so so quick review. We have uh, a specific aesthetic that we're going for, and I'd like to outline our terminology. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, sorry. This is the ultimate like in 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 in, in, in like programmer bike shedding that we're going to engage in right now. But I think it's a fun exercise. Okay, the aesthetic that we're going for uh, is. Of course, I don't have the game in the condition that I want it to be right now. But it is basically, uh, we want wire framing, but without the intermediate edges of these triangles, right? Mm-hmm. The, the GPU wants to do everything in terms of triangles for very good reason. It's mathematically simple and easy to work with. But we want surfaces uh, to only have their outlines drawn. Right, so if this was a cube, we'd only see the four edges of this face of the cube rather than anything intervening, right? The fancy thing that we're going for is that um, any coplanar surface that shares an edge with another, uh, or rather, I- I- any two triangles that uh, share an edge with a coplanar neighbor, uh, that edge should not be displayed. Um, so that would re- remove this line, that would remove this line, all of these in the, in the interior of the face, right? Um, the names that we have come up with with this aesthetic right now in the game it is called the wire solid, which is a, a, a twist on the wire frame. Mm-hmm. I think you had suggested that this could also be called the outline shape outline aesthetic. At one point, though, I think I had that. Uh, yeah, wire no, outline. I think I liked wire outline. Yeah, outline solid. So, so many potential good words for this. Yes. Uh, and we need a name because we're going to be referring to, to, this, to this visual effect a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, so what are your top, top two out of these? I really like Wire Solid, actually. I think it's a, a, okay. a good name for what we're doing. Yeah. These are my top two. Let me not, let me not get rid of these. I'll, I'm going to use the Domin- Dominic DeGrati technique of Moving the text up. Move them lines. I like wire solid though. Okay. Great. Wire solid uh, has the disadvantage of not being very obvious what it is when if you have no idea, like no context. Mm-hmm. But I think it has the advantage of being a mutation on a well-known term, which is wireframe, right? It's like because like basically this is the wireframe that we're looking at here. Yeah. Um. Now, I, I actually composed the geometry on this cube in an in a intentionally uh, like obtuse way, and I, I made each 
face of the cube like four quads as opposed to just one quad, which means that there normally there would just be like one giant diagonal basically being of two triangles. At any rate, the wireframe would include the, tri the, di the triangular diagonals, but the wire solid would not. And the solid implies that essentially that the, the faces are all sol solid shaded, right? Mm -hmm. um, outline solid has the advantage of, I think, being a little bit more clear. But then you don't kind of get the wireframe flavor to it, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think we're going to, we're still trying to get across a wireframe aesthetic, even though it's not like precisely a wireframe of the model because we're letting it, because um, we're trying to remove some faces. But like, I would call it a wireframe. Like, I think in, in a good understanding, it's just a wireframe. Yes. Great. Okay. So, so that's easy. wire solid it is, <laughs> yeah. which... Makes me happy because then I don't have to rename anything ah. in the code base. At least not right now. I'm thrilled. Wire Solid wins. It is the champion. Heck um, yeah. Okay. So there are actually two ways of doing it that we've talked about so far. And it kind of branches, actually. So the first way of doing it is a line mesh, which is necessarily to pass render. Mm -hmm. Pass one, draw opaque sides to Z buffer surfaces. Uh, pass two, draw line mesh. Z buffer uses greater than, uh, less than or equal to. Um, mm -hmm. So we've done that. We did that well. Uh, I think. That was basically fairly straightforward for us to do. Um, the problem with this thing, it's necessarily two pass, so it's going to be slower. Uh, can't control thickness of lines. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a maybe. Can't do proximity effects in fragment shader. I'm not sure if this is a serious uh, disadvantage, but the, what I mean by proximity effects is that like, if you're on a pixel near the edge that you're drawing, that doesn't show up in the fragment shader at all, hmm. right? Uh, for the line mesh, uh, I think the line for, for the line for the line renderer, the fragment shader literally just runs on the pixels uh, that are being drawn. Um, it doesn't run for like when you when you run it over a triangle. Um, you basically uh, will get all of the pixels inside the, the triangle, which means that you can kind of do like, you potentially can do like cool stuff near the edge, like a like a fade or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've covered that. That was what we did like a month ago, maybe or uh, three weeks ago or something like that. The other way is to do the lines uh, in the fragment shader. Uh, this is, can do one pass render, hmm. asterisk. Um, can do thick lines, hmm. but it's hard. <laughs> uh, we haven't got it look like we haven't got it quite right. Right. Correct. OK, um, really quick, I, I want to talk about this is uh, what we're looking at right now. Um, I've intentionally uh, not eliminated the uh, intermediate edges here. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the way that I did that is inside our geometry utilities. This is our function that basically goes through all of the triangles and says, should we include an edge or should we exclude an edge? Oh, I see. You've, we turned, had, you've just the turned money shot everything. here was like this line of logic here that I won't bother going over. But I basically said, you know what? Forget it. It's always true. Always include every single edge, right? So that's that's how this edge is being included there. Um, now, uh, actually, let me copy this. I want to I, I want to hang on to this thing here. Um, this is the naive sh uh, frag shader. <laughs> So if I if I just go ahead and undo this, um, and let me get, let me get the naive frag shader back in there. Uh, 
Okay, so this is our naive frag shader mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the appropriate algorithm here. Mm -hmm. So well, we'll just keep it like this. Um, ugh, I gotta paste it again. Man, I'm gonna we're gonna have to local storage this thing at some point. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so this is actually kind of a cool view, a cool indication of the disadvantages of the naive shader implementation, right? All this is saying is that we're going to take the attribute that we added. This is the special sauce of the fragment shader. We went through the geometry and added these extra attributes. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Steve shading technique, right? And we're basically saying if we're going to do a greater than, like a component-wise greater than comparison between all the values inside this three-dimensional vector with some thickness value, right? Um, and if any of the components of edge on are greater than 0 0.9995, which means that we're very, very close to the edges, we're going to draw those edges. Huh. Um, so interestingly enough, uh, this is what we get. Um, one, we can definitely tell that there's no anti-aliasing in here, right? And you can see that from the code. Mm -hmm. uh, we're basically just picking between two different colors. So anti-aliasing would imply some sort of blending, uh, but that's just not, there's, it's not there. We're not seeing it. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is a, is a very dramatic difference in thickness, line thickness between, uh, I mean, really points of lines that are close to the camera versus points that are farther away. Even on this edge, you can actually you can see it tell that it's thinning taper. out, right? And if you, you made can... if you made the edge on even thicker, would that be would it be more obvious? Yeah, let's try it. Oh well, different problem. Uh, it's certainly obvious that the lines in the back are much thinner. Yeah. Um. Yeah, are they half again as thick? I think that sounds right. Okay. Well, if they're half as thick, I think that's there's actually a good explanation for that. Because the way that this shading technique works is that we can only shade on the interior of triangles. So we can only shade on this side. Because there's another triangle on the top, we can actually shade for that as well. Right? Um, let me go ahead and bring this back to a thinner, a thinner triangle, right? Uh, a thinner thing. Mm -hmm. um, so actually that notching, that notching phenomenon, which is very obvious here, mm -hmm. we have notches here and notches here. Um, I'm gonna actually mark that down as an unsolved problem, right? Um, yeah, I thought that's what Steve Shaving was gonna fix for us. Because uh, we had the same issue when we just did it with Barry Centric. Yeah, Barry Centric was much more severe it, when we did Barry, when we did the Barry centric one, because like we we basically had a complete gap at the edges, complete like ah, uh, I see, right? We, like yeah. we basically any of the any of the connecting points, it would just be completely blank, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That was the big problem, um, but we are still suffering from it uh, in, with this formulation. Yep. Um. Now, let's let's assume that we don't have a line that's this thick. Let's let's like make it much thinner. Um, we still have the anti-aliasing problem. We still have the problem where, like, these edges and like farther in the back are are, are pretty, pretty disappointing looking. They're very sad. Um, so let's let's roll in this thing that I added yesterday, which was like a total guess. Bring it on. <laughs> what to do? And um, I, I'm not even sure if I can explain it, but maybe <laughs> you can explain it to me. So I did this. It's starting to look pretty good, right? Oh shit! Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I th I, can you tell on stream that there is a little bit of a notching effect? I, just barely. Make, make yeah, them, you make can them see a it little maybe obviously oh, down here. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, again, I, I, I designed the geom geometry of this cube very obtusely in the sense that, like, this is actually, like, there's, like, it's discontinuous, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, uh, we're going to have geometry. We're going to have complex models that are going to do this exact thing. Yep. So there's... This is actually going to be a little bit more representative of what we'll get in, in quote unquote real life. Mm -hmm. And it's any time that a straight edge is made up of two triangles, we lose part of the edge is essentially the rule for Steve Shading. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. So I was actually copying. Um,
I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this link <laughs> right away. So we're going to go to our Slack real quick. Yeah, as I say, we've got a we've got a better record than Google. Yes. Um, I had to put it in a thread because I was just like I couldn't find anything. <laughs> um, do you remember this website? Oh yeah, the one that's only in archive.org. I most yeah. I most certainly do. <laughs> Good old Florian. Is that B? Would there be an umlaut over either the O or the E? I don't know. If this is written. Good old Florian. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I copied this code. Right. Uh, this this looks somewhat familiar, right? Uh, he was using Barry centric coordinates. That's right. Uh, because he wasn't trying to do like shared edge removal on coplanar trying like coplanar neighbors, right? Um, so what's interesting is that the polarity of his comparison is actually reversed from ours. He hmm. was doing, we were doing, we, we had, we were doing greater than, remember the naive solution was greater than, mm -hmm. um, because for this Steve shading, the closer you are to the edge, the higher your attribute value gets. Right. Right. Um, whereas with Barry Sencha coordinates, uh, what you are looking for is when any of the attributes approach to zero, which means you're as far away from the opposing vertex. Right. That was the that was the whole Barry centric mm -hmm. algorithm, right? So it looks like um, you just you just invert the coordinate on line whatever it is, the first line of that function. Yeah. This one here. Okay. So what I did is I, I made it a subtraction. Mm -hmm. Which kind of made me wonder is like what if we encode the edge on, uh, attribute as one minus the value that we calculate in the first place, right? I think we'd basically come up with the the equivalent to this, like like basically, when we when we do uh, this, which, let me try to remember where the function actually is. Oh yes, uh, yeah, it's that. Uh, it's this stuff, right? Right. So you would populate that with ones and just subtract one, or just assign to zero. Yeah. Uh, yes, this would all be ones, mm -hmm. and we would assign to zero here, right? That would that would be the equivalent. Yeah, I think that's super super reasonable. Uh, yeah. I assume doing that. I assume that somehow doing that subtraction in the GPU is like a silly thing to do. <laughs> it, it, it's it's silly because we don't do anything with edge on otherwise. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's not like it's costing us that much. Um, so I guess we can try to study a little bit this, this particular piece of code, or we can look at our version of it if, if that, that, that helps. But basically I copied it straight from this dude, straight up. Right. Um, and one thing to, to note for him is, is I, I don't think that he's going to experience this kind of notching behavior because his, his actual usage of attributes is different to ours. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we might want to think hard about what the difference actually is and why we're getting the notches. Well, in, fact, in, in his wireframe, th is there edge removal? There's no edge removal in the easy There's no edge removal. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's the notching. Yeah. So uh, I think we can see the notching a little bit more obvious when I increase this multiplier here. Oh, like yeah. You can, yeah, you can really see it there. Oh, interesting. And it's, and it's got a really fuzzy edge to it, too. It's not a... Snellinger feels like it's a hard edge. Is yeah, that... this looks like a mid '90s 3D game, right? Like yeah. these kind of like gurat gurat shading, you know. Which I'm not not into. I am pretty not into this style, actually. <laughs> I do I I do look forward to having like a bloom shader or something to give our stuff yeah. That this is glow. like proto N64 games, right? Yeah, which I feel yeah. like was actually just a low res texture where they couldn't actually draw a hard line. Yeah, or they were doing vertex coloring with, with just like, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, this is pretty crappy looking, yeah. right? Um, I don't know. I, I guess if you're into like, you know, did you ever watch Lawnmower Man? You know, just like oh, old, man. School, yeah, <laughs> old, old school that's, visions of the future. That's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny. Yeah. You know, I guess like, there's a lot I like about this technique, and the limitation is, like, the limitation is that our model 
that we just need to like craft models to fit it. But I don't actually feel terrible about that because we're missing like the all important um, geometry shader. Yeah. So I'm kind of willing to accept some compromise on the WebGL side just because we have to. <laughs> right. So uh, just to talk through this yeah. map. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, I, I I don't know how this works, so we're gonna have to just like kind of like fumble through it. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, we're calling this mysterious function lerp alpha, which takes our edge on attribute and does some fancy math on it, right? Right. But what we're actually doing with that is we're doing an interpolation. Mix is is lerp. Uh, oh, I yeah. see. Huh. Um, so basically the mix here is that, um, it's kind of, this is normally like the reverse order of the way that you'd think of a lerp. Cause usually you would put, um, you'd put the zero first. So I, I guess we, if we really wanted to think of, think of it conventionally, we'd put the zero first here and then we'd do a one minus over here, mm -hmm. which is kind of a head scratcher, right? Uh, but oh. maybe this is, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 never mind. Um, so, so, so yeah, this, is, this is, this is taking our color and scaling it from zero to, or multiplying the color by zero to lerp alpha. Wait. Yeah. So is, is this lerping our lerp? Uh, a little bit. So lerp alpha is basically saying, um, the higher this is the more black the color is going to be, mm -hmm. right? And conversely, the lower this is, the more blue this is going to be, right? So what that means is that, like, when we're directly on the edge, lerp alpha is zero. And when we're in the middle of the surface here, lerp alpha is one. Mm -hmm. But then when we're in these kind of, like, intermediate spaces, the lerp alpha is kind of, it's a decimal value, right? Somewhere halfway between black and blue and black, right? Yeah. So that's what we should think of when we look at this, right? OK. Hmm. So we're reversing um, edge on here. Uh, and then we're calculating the f width of this expression. And this is where my head starts to hurt a little bit, right? So basically what the f width is is like, what is the change along both the x and y axis? We're just going to like. Add, them, add those values together in screen space for this value here. Um, and the reason why we care about this is we kind of want to be able to scale our visual results by how big the triangle is. Let me, let me, let me see if I can whiteboard this that, to make this a little bit easier. I, I kind of had to convince myself that this was actually the case. And let me see if there's a way I can actually draw this by plugging it into my computer. Hmm. I'm going to not use Miro right now because it's hard to coordinate Miro when I'm the, when I'm the person uh, presenting. Fair. Yeah, you have to move your own screen around. Uh, let's see if I can reach the one additional USB port on this fancy new computer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, isn't that a bummer? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer. Um, you'd have to get like a Thunderbolt hub otherwise. Do those things exist? Yeah, I actually already had one uh, to swap between my streaming PC and my Mac. So, Well, aren't we fancy? Yeah, no nothing changed, but I'm still annoyed because I have to put the thing in backwards. <laughs> Gosh, it's really okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my brain around the value for f with, f with, and essentially what you're saying is that as as we step away from the edge, right? It's the thing that's doing the 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 screen relative delta for like how skewed the triangle is to us. That's not the right thing. Oh, that's weird. Oh yeah, new uh, new movie, movie recording. Yeah, isn't it? silly that when you want to look at the screen you got to say movie recording and it's not at all screen recording it's a little funny yeah uh it's not finding my ipad hmm. 
It's charging it. <laughs> Rude. Oh, I have to trust the computer. Oh. So I bet if I turn it off and turn it on again, it'll work. Any wagers? Oh, it's going to work. Off and on again is always the... I wouldn't bet against it, that's for sure. There we go. Oh, nice. Woo! Beautiful. That was an ordeal. Thanks for bearing with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll just, I'll okay. Just, I'll just put a SpongeBob transition on that. Our new favorite technique. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. As, long as, as long as it's not us fumbling because we're, we're completely offline. <laughs> no, it yeah. is Tuesday, January 9th, 9.41 a.m. All the time. Every time. Yeah. Every time. Well, it actually goes back to January 9th, too. That's really funny. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, this is our viewport, right? Mm hmm. Imagine that we have two triangles that are exactly the same size in world space, but they are different distances away from the viewport, from the, from the camera, right? So let's say we have one triangle here. That's relatively close. Mm -hmm. And then we have one triangle that's like way back here. Now it's the same physical size in, uh, in uh, world space. Mm -hmm. Okay, same object. But when they project onto the screen, it's like this one here is gonna be It's going to be quite a bit bigger than this other one. This other one's going to be kind of tiny, right? Yeah, exactly. But for the wire solid aesthetic, did that read for you when I said wire solid? Did that, did that did. click? I like it. All right. Amazing. Yes. I think we've it chosen our name well. We're, we, should, we should go into marketing rather than game development. I think this is our future. I, I mean, I've been a marketer before, so... You've been a marketer before? Tell me about I'll that. I'll go back. Uh, it was my first gig, actually, right out of college. I joined a marketing firm uh, and became, like, a, a partner. It was very Mad Men, actually. <laughs> like, did client meetings, drove, drove to New York, and, like, tried to pitch people to choose us as their ad agency. It was really fun. It was like, I, it was like Mad really Men, except without all the bad this. parts. <laughs> I really want to hear more about this story. <laughs> Okay. Uh, much less glam glamorous than it actually sounds. I was just like a poor 22 year old who had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Same model being drawn twice, mm -hmm. different distances away in world space. Mm -hmm. Come out to be different sized triangles in screen space, mm -hmm. right? Through the magic of projection. Um, however, uh, the wire solid aesthetic is to draw the borders of both these triangles with exactly the same thickness. Correct. Um, okay, so how do you do that? Because uh, the wire, sh the the actual attribute values in screen space, uh, like if you take a look at, oh, if you take a look at like let's 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 take a pixel that is this is not doing palm rejection very well right now. I'm sorry. Bummer. Um, if you take a pixel that's like this distance away. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we take the same screen space distance of the pixel over here, what is the edge on of this pixel versus the edge on value of this pixel? Right. Yeah, the, the one on the left is like 0.9 and the one on the right is like all the way to like 0.6 or something. Like it's, exactly. It's a much, a much more drastic, yeah. Yeah. Um. Really, what you can actually do is just like you can take the ratio of how these two like triangles are being scaled on this screen, and you basically know what the edge on value is given the same pixel distance away from the edge, right? You just scale it by whatever their whatever their proportional sizes are, right? Does that does that does that r roughly make sense? Yeah, it's it's really hard to. It's hard. It's hard to have in my brain that the graphics card knows how to do that. But like once, once I remember that it's there. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the reason why the graphics card knows how to do that is that it has to do this with for texturing, right? Uh, a lot of this like screen space partial derivative stuff um, it originally was in the hardware because it, you need to do it for texturing because you basically need to know like, well, if I'm actually only one pixel over, um, it, it, anyways, it does this for all the attributes. It does it for the normals. It does it for the positions. It does it for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, not just for the edge on. It does it for everything. Uh, okay, so uh, you, if you actually think about it, um, like let's say it's our, the distance from the left side of the triangle. Uh, the attribute really goes, let's say the Steve shading attribute really goes from the value of one here mm -hmm. to zero anywhere on this line for a particular attribute, right? At least that's the way the barycentric version works. And if you bear with me, that's kind of like what we're, what we're going for here. Totally. It's not exactly 100% right. Um, the screen space partial derivative at this point is basically going to tell us like how far along this line from from one to zero we are. Because mm -hmm. if you go pixel by pixel, that's just gonna add up to one, right? Okay. So it's, is it, I guess it's, it's weird because the value is already sort of percentage based. Yeah, so you can think of that. Actually, think of the screen space per, uh, partial derivative as the percentage of well, it's the opposite, yeah. right? Because one to zero is percentage based, like that for the size of the triangle, but is the screen state partial derivative is like sort of stretching and compressing that to be pixel based? Like it's it it's consistent based, for each no matter because, where you uh because both Barry Center coordinates and the Steve shading coordinates go from zero to one, you can if you add up all the screen space partial derivatives going across the triangle, it's gonna add up to one. Does that make sense? So you can almost think of it as a percentage. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the screen space partial derivative at this point will tell you basically the percentage of the triangle, how, how, what percentage of the triangle you are from, for, for, uh, from the edge. And so what that means is you actually want to use this as some kind of scaling value, the screen space partial derivative, rather. Mm. For how far, for, your, for what your attribute value actually is. Because remember, like, we want... Let's say we want like a like a really thick line that's this thick. Um, but if we just used the edge on attribute for that, mm -hmm. uh, we would end up getting a much thinner line on this triangle. Right. Right. So what we really want to know is we want to base it off of that value, but we kind of just want to use the screen source partial derivative to tell us like, you know, what percentage of the tri like triangle are we like, are we on? Cause that'll allow us to divide out the scaling. We can like basically normalize correct for the scaling of the triangle uh, on the screen, basically. Hmm. Um, can we try to just think of that in terms of a simpler example? Let's just take two squares. And let's say the squares are like the ratio of four to one. I'm just pulling numbers out of my butt right now. <laughs> and we want a, a two pixel width line, right? Mm -hmm. So we have like two pixels worth of the line. And we want to, we want to shade that pixel to be the solid, the, the, the stroke color, right? Right. Which means we actually want it to be two pixels over here as well, right? Mm -hmm. What is edge on over here? What's what would be like the example value of that? Or the maximum value of edge on? Yeah. Uh, so it would basically be what does that look like to you? It's like a quarter of the way across. Yeah. 
So edge on would be uh, like 0.75. Sure. And this would be like 0.5. Yep. Sounds right. Something like that. Um, so if this was our reference, we would write the shader to say like if edge on is greater than or equal to 0 0.75. Right. Oops. Then the color is equal to the stroke. Mm -hmm. But this draws a line half as thick on the smaller cube. Else, yeah, color is the fill, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it'll draw half as thick. So we have to, like, compensate somehow. Yep. Right? Um, so if we divided by, it's, it's tough cause I'm not drawing like proportional things. So this is not actually four to one. It's probably something a little quite, maybe it's more like eight to one or something like that. Mm. Um, but basically the screen space partial derivative of this point is going to be 0.5 and the screen space partial derivative of this one, I guess is going to be exactly the same value as well right interesting it's not but the thing is i don't want to i don't want to present the case that the, the value of the attribute is the same thing as its screen space partial derivative i don't think that's true i don't think so either yeah huh but the idea here is if you divide one by the other you're going to get like one over here and you're going to get one over here hmm. and you could use this comparison of the division in your in your inequality Right. Gotcha. So you could say like if edge on divided by the screen space partial derivative of edge on mm -hmm. is equal to one and your color is equal to the stroke. Otherwise the color is equal to the fill. Yep. Okay, so that's kind of the basic premise of that. I'm not getting the numbers exactly right, but somehow you're using the screen space partial derivative to basically tell you how far away from, uh, uh, how, how far along the triangle you are in like, and you use that to basically normalize for the scaling of the triangle relative to objects that would be the same size, right? Mm -hmm. So that brings us to this math here, um, which we kind of need to kind of crack a little bit. So there's no division going on here, actually. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, basically, what they're saying is like, if we consider f width of this value to be just like, w like what percentage across the triangle are we, right? Mm -hmm. We get a delta. Um, oh, oh, actually, we are comparing it to this thing. We're uh, this is uh, INV. I just called the inverse. I didn't know what to call this value. It's like the inverse edge on. Yeah. Like that. I mean, we should just change it on edge on. If that's what we're going to do too. That's easy. Yeah. We could call this edge on <laughs> lowercase. Uh, no, inv is better. Don't, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> um, that hurts. Yeah. Okay. So smooth step. Uh, that's not, that's really not the best that this could do. I think I'll just go to the Wikipedia article. Smooth step is a function whose domain is zero to one and whose range is zero to one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a, a function that is like a pass through function would just, would just be like a straight diagonal line. Right. But what smooth step is doing is it's saying like, when we're near the edges, uh, when we're near the edges, so your smooth step is this blue one, but like smoother step exaggerates it. So smoother step actually is the better example of like essentially what's going on here. Mm. I think this her this 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 curve is technically called a Hermite curve. Hmm. Um, there are other curves that are similar looking to this that are like sometimes called sigmoid curves. Uh, sigmoids are actually used in machine learning a lot, and that actually sigmoid is, lo looks almost like an inverse, like an arctangent curve. It's like a very it's like much more exaggerated in terms of its verticality in the middle. Um, but the general idea is that you want like values near the edge to be much to be kind of flattened and compressed into a smaller range, 
so that that's true the, the edges near one as well mm -hmm. but then you also but then you kind of allow the values near the middle to kind of reflect their true values that's basically what these step functions are doing is it's just changing essentially the distribution of values um, So smooth step uh, is basically saying uh, we're going to go from, I think this is the minimum, this <laughs> is the maximum, and this is how far along we want to go. I think that's what it is. I, but how do we know that, oh, because, uh, sorry, can, we, can you, mm, yeah, min max x. So in in this case, oh, is a value zero to one? Yeah, okay. Yes, it's a value so, from zero. So to that's one. our percentage along the zero to delta times whatever. Exactly. Okay. It is the. Um... So we are so we are comparing the two values, yeah. Or multiplying or dividing by them. It's essentially like how far along this bottom line are we? Yep. That's what it's using the literal edge on attribute for, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the height of this is determined by the screen space partial derivative. I'm trying to add that together in my head to see why it works the way it does. Because this is actually, I think, r relatively succeeding in keeping consistent with mm -hmm. uh, edges, right? Well, so what I see us doing is multiplying our attribute by the screen space partial derivative in that case, is that correct? I think that's right, yeah, because there's a yeah. multiplication here, right? Uh, well, I mean, we're multiplying inv by delta times 9.25, though, I think is the, the key. Because that's, yes. that's our scaling yes, factor. Yes, that's right, yeah. that's our scaling factor. So, mm, okay. And then, uh, gotcha. And then we're, we're basically saying, give me the minimum of because these are all vector operations, right? Like, inv is actually a, a vec three. Yep. Delta is a vec three. Smooth step produces a vec three. So we w basically are trying to find the minimum of those. And basically, we're trying to find if any of those values on either the x, y, or z direction are less than a certain value. Um, and we take the minimum, basically, because we're trying to say that, remember, the lower that lerp alpha is, the closer to blue we are, right? Mm -hmm. So we're saying, along any of these dimensions, are we close to one of these edges, right? And if so, shade, it to, sh shade, shade the pixel blue. Gotcha. Now, is, is there a way to do this with a hard edge as well? Like, what has given us our fuzzy edge? Uh, the amount of fuzz is, I believe, uh, based on the smooth step function. Okay. Like, uh, like if, if it, we, if we wanted to do this linearly, uh, we could just. Let's say if we, if we smooth step from like, okay. If we did this linearly, what if we did this? Mm -hmm. Then let me lower this number. Let's try two. Interesting. Can you divide by inverse there actually? Because that is the algorithm that we expected. Or I guess actually we were expecting inverse over delta. So inverse is between zero and one, right? Yeah, so so we want to see inverse over f with times the pixel width of our line. It is the linear version, right? Divided by. Yeah, because I mean that's the that's what you wrote out on the iPad too, is that we divide the value by the f width of the value. Yeah, I'm not sure if the division is the way that this is working though. Like I, this is just me guessing, right? Uh, this can, is just kind of. Can you yeah. give it a shot? I think it actually would work. Like if you wanted to divide here. I think just, but uh, in in vis the top. Because you're you're gonna buy by zero at some point there. It's inv over delta. And then let's get rid of the multiplier here. Is that? Yeah, the multiplier is the pixel width. Uh, I think that kind of worked. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you put nine point two five back in there, we'll get thick lines.
Why, why does it look exactly the same? <laughs> well, actually, uh, does it look much less smooth to you? It does look less smooth to yeah. me. So, so I guess... Is so this is this is like a linear drop off, right? If we wanted yeah. to, if we wanted a hard edge, we wouldn't do mix here. The okay. mix is actually what's causing the the color blending. Ah, gotcha. So right, the lerp the smooth step was doing our anti aliasing. The mix is doing our fuzz. Correct. Okay. Cool. Now there might be a way to can kind of combine these so that you have a certain thickness that is totally hard. Mm -hmm. And then you have a short distance that is any, al any alias. That's basically what you would want, well, right? Yeah, what would Mix do if you did it from like 0.9 to Lerp Alpha, right? Would that... Like, if, if, oh, that, this. if that's the min, yeah, wouldn't that sort of pull our... Holy shit, that's cool. That's not what it I expected. Cool. <laughs> yeah. The, 0.9 is actually the color white, right? Or it's like a, like a light gray. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here with these opposing triangles. Mm -mm. It seems to break it really badly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a lot of questions about what just happened, because that... What? It's kind of a... The mystery continues to... Mysteries continue to compound, don't they? Uh-huh. Okay, this... But that that's actually sort of... Yeah, it's definitely taking over more of the space as you go further, not less. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. That's neat. What? <laughs> I'm a little confused because our Lerp Alpha... Sorry, so what are we... Oh, uh... So this is kind of interesting. You're starting to see where the cutoffs are. Yep. And the cutoffs are interesting because they almost seem uh, like they have a polarity. So maybe there is a bug in the way that the shader is designed or the way that we're assigning the attributes to the, the vertices. Well, I think because, it's... I mean, if I, yeah. if I were to look at it, I think the, the top left triangle, as we're looking at the cube right now, has two edges on, and the triangle that's adjacent to it in the top left quadrant have no, has no edges has on. Has no edges yeah. on, yeah, so... Yeah. That makes sense. That does draw. It does draw the thing I expected to draw. It's just inconvenient. <laughs> it is inconvenient. Yeah. And actually, you know what? This makes sense. It makes sense because if the edges are all off on this interior triangle here, you really shouldn't draw a thing. You yeah. shouldn't draw anything inside of it, right? Correct. Because the shading on the, the basically the shading on. For this triangle is all correct, but it can't shade anything outside of its own border. Mm -hmm. right. Now, uh, if if you were to flip the orientation of those triangles, so if the uh, seam ran down the top right corner, there would be no gap in this one. If we were to flip the orientation of these yeah, two so, triangles, yeah, yeah. So your your sandwich slices are cut this way and if you turned the oh you make the diagonal go this go in this direction. correct so the geometry can save us here if we need it to okay let's try it oh can you do that I'm gonna copy this shader into our notes mm -hmm. um and yeah i mean basically in the render toy i just have you just got a cube right i just got a cube um and this is going to be a little bit complicated to think about, but mm -hmm. we can do it. Um, you're saying we want we want the diagonals to go this way. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to happen with the way that this code is structured is that um, the diagonal will be this way on this triangle as well, so we're going to see the cut go the other direction. That's the problem, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, go, well, go to the other side real quick. Was it doing something even weirder? No, no. They're, okay. they should be identical. Yeah, they're all identical. These are all rotations. Um, so what we can do, though, is make the diagonals form a star pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So we, let's do this just so we can prove that we can. Great. But there's a but. <laughs> um, OK, so this is how we're arranging. Uh, this is how, like, I, I kind of did this through loops because it was just too painful to just, like, try to, like, map out every single triangle. Because there was what? There's. 
eight triangles per face times six faces. I would have had to do like plot out 48 faces, 48 triangles plus their normals. It was just too painful. So I basically just made, made it in loops. Um, what this is doing is the indices are ordered. The indices look like this. Um, you got <laughs> north. This is you basically have your your points for each face are or, or, or arranged in order, uh, sort of northwest, north, northeast, west, center, east, mm -hmm. southwest, south, southeast. Yep. Right. Um, ah, yeah. So I mean, I guess yeah. The the thing we can't just change the one quadrant because it'll break the other two working. Quadrants. Yeah, it'll break the other two. Yeah. Um, so we basically have to do each face. We have to spell it out like very exhaustively, right? Um, so the way that would work, we basically have to do this four times, right? Yeah. And or um, could we just alternate? Can we have two two patterns that we flip? Yeah, we can. But the, the offsets are going to be are going to be different. So. Mm -hmm. Let me just let me just map it out. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, we have this push here, and this is kind of like the northwest quad quad, mm -hmm. and we're going to do the northeast quad, and so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. First triangle of the northwest quad. I mean, it's kind of arbitrary which one we pick. So let's just pick the top one here, this one. So it's going to be index base, which is the top left corner. And we want to go counterclockwise, OK? Mm -hmm. So counterclockwise will go down to this corner, right? That's counterclockwise? Yeah. This direction? So northwest, southeast. Which northeast. is the center one. And the center one is, is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then. Two, mm -hmm. or one rather, it's the second one. So that's the top triangle of the northwest quad, and the bottom triangle. Uh, we'll start again with the, this one. But to go counterclockwise, we're going to go uh, to index three, mm -hmm. right? And then four to index one again, right? It's index four. Oh, this is index four. Yeah. Yes. Good call. So the northeast quad, northeast quad, we want to go this way, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start at this vertex. And to go counterclockwise, we'd be going like this, mm -hmm. right? So it's one, four, three, right? Uh, one, four, two. One, four, two, yes. Mm-hmm. And then now we're doing this triangle here. Mm -hmm. Let's start with two. Okay. And then counterclockwise would be like this. Two, four, five. Yeah. Two, four, five. Yeah. Yeah, you've got this. Hey, man. Take me, um, take me back to plain old accountant. I'm with you. Southwest quad. Okay. I just saved by accident. So this is going to be a total mess. Uh, we're going to have to just do, use our imagination here. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> So southwest quad, uh, we want this diagonal. Is that correct? Yes. So let's start with this triangle of this point. Okay. This one is three. Three. Mm -hmm. And we want to go counterclockwise. Six, so four. Three, six, four. And it probably should just resem resemble this pattern, right? Um, just th it's like plus three minus two, plus three minus two. Hmm. And if this started with three, this next triangle should start with. Well, let's just work it out. Mm -hmm. uh, um, four, six, four, seven. Yeah. 
four, six, seven. Adding two to that looks right to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's plus two plus one right there, yep. right? Okay. Which means that this one should be a good model for our Southeast squad, right? Mm -hmm. Except we're going to start at the center point, which is four, right? Mm -hmm. So that is four over what it was before. So this should be plus eight plus four. This mm -hmm. plus four plus seven plus eight, right? Save works. Cool. Nicely done. All right. Make, make and that line there's thicker. no cut. There's no cut, right? We want to make, we want to bring our old shader back, right? That's what we had before. Mm -hmm. Even turning, I should really just be modifying the shader. <laughs> as I say, even turning up the delta on. Oh, yeah, there you go. Beautiful. Weird, but yeah. beautiful. It is that weird. Yeah. That is fucking strange. But you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense uh, because. Do the... you notice? That we're that our our sort of division here is not quite doing the right thing because we're we're seeing the full triangle here. Yeah, well, I was going to say we're seeing it as the percentage of the triangle we're looking at. Exactly it takes up more of the screen. Yeah, yeah, or it takes up less exactly. of the screen. That is. H how does this look if we put? Um, if you go back to the smooth stuff function, I ex I'm expecting the same thing, I guess. And let's just multiply by this. Yeah. It does kind of happen. Let me let me make this a, a little, little bit more bit, obvious. Yeah. 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 You can kind of see it, right? Just a little. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, should we crank it up even more? Go for it. Yeah, Oof. that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yowch. Holy shit! Weird. So it's as if the screen space partial derivative can help us compensate, but it's not going to do the full job for us. Yeah, and, and that kind of makes sense to me. Like, I don't actually... I, I guess I'd be surprised if it was the entire... If that attribute was the magic wire from attributes. So this looks okay. What am I looking for? Disable, GLSL disable... Um, hmm. Perspective correct interpolation... No perspective. Use cases are only limited by your imagination. <laughs> As a, you can do anti alias wireframe frame rendering with this. And this is pretty promising. Uh, uh, Archive.org, hit it. <laughs> um, yeah. That's interesting. So doing it as if there's no perspective. Yeah. It is dot dk. So what is dot dk? Well, Donkey I'll Kong? tell you what that 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 URL seems somewhat familiar to me. Dang, like this one. Dot dk. I mean Denmark. It's a. Let's open this SIGGRAPH paper. Heck yeah. So this, as far as I can tell, is the earliest wireframe rendering reference mm. that I've seen. Single pass wireframe rendering with hidden surface removal. Now we're talking. I bet um, this depends on the geometry shader. It doesn't. Oh, oh, good. Oh, you've read this already. Have I? I have not read this. Yeah. To my um, own chagrin. I think this is pretty similar to uh, this dude's thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, they're suspiciously using a lot of the same. As I say, is he an author? Is there a name for this particular rabbit? There must be a name for that. No, like, but it's it's everywhere. I think. It's like the monkey head in Blender. I think it's called Susan or something like that. Or Samantha. Um, but this is from what? 2012. So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we already make fun of this guy for his 2012 web design. Why would this I make not, fun of it? It's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah, you're right. Why am I, why am I hating? Yeah, don't hate on that. Yeah. Um, so I think they have a no perspective on this. So this is beautiful. This is what we want, right? This looks awesome. Except they're not trying to eliminate 
uh, the diagonals. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if you would eliminate diagonals on this mesh, unless you, unless these were truly quads. I guess uh, it depends. Yeah, but it, it, I it, I'd expect them to be. But let's. What I mean by quads is like coplanar triangles. Yeah. Two, two coplanar triangles. Yeah. Um, and they kind of compare and contrast a lot of this stuff. So they did actually do quads here, which is cool. Hmm. Right? Use alpha testing to remove the interior of the pocket. That's not what we're talking about. Mm -mm. Uh, oh, this looks like that other demo we found. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit like that. Yeah. Does not support index geometry. We 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 learn that. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, primitive geometry shaders living at this. Haha. <sighs> so I found a problem with this, but we can talk about it later. Okay. Um, oh, they seem to be doing something with this gear here, right? This looks awfully like it's tune shaded rather than, but they do have these lines here. Mm -hmm. which is what we're kind of what we're going for um show me the code i don't think they're gonna that's a bummer this is a presentation not a uh yeah spec so sorry we're trying to look for the no perspective correct okay so what if we just put it on is that all it is it's just a modifier like that uh i think so Did it work? Nope. It's actually WebGL. Mm. There is a no perspective qualifier. Okay, how do I use it? Yeah, that's the, oh, wait, it was right there. Uh, what is it a qualifier on? I'm pretty sure it's the qualifier on the huh and what are they doing just, here are they I saying that this is equivalent to the math i just want to see it like in code yeah <laughs> why is no one using it type qualifier flat and smooth okay so i've seen this before but like where yeah wait i think the third link had it in code as a this one Does it, uh, need it is to be an on the output of the vertex shader. Interesting. Is that what's is the vertex shader? What is the source of interpolation? I guess so. It's kind of in between these two. Yeah. So what? Illegal use of reserved word. We're, it's the reserved word we're using. Um, it could be the version of GLSL that we're using, right? Mm -hmm. This is version one 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 fifty. Gotcha. So GLSL 3.0, no perspective. We're going to find this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe. <gasps> it's always good when you get a PDF, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Interpolation qualifier. I'm doing my own Googling over here. It's wild how little this is used. On GLES, as far as I know, does not support the no perspective qualifier, which supposedly does what I want. No. I mean, I guess, like, we're just, we're just hitting so many strange issues with, like, the limitations of GLSL. Like, we're missing the parts of the language that do what we want. Should we like pick up a dumber solution? The dumber solution is to use the line mesh. I have a, I have a dumber one, which is to draw quads in the shape of lines that are thicker. Oh, but we'll, we'll still actually have perspective problems, won't we? It won't actually solve a thing. Damn. They'll be they'll be thinner at a distance. That's too bad. Yeah. Man. 
yeah, I mean, the other thing we could do is... draw... Somehow, you have to know which points to connect, but like, I mean, you could do this in Canvas 2D, right? You could do it in... You could do, you could do your projection in the CPU find all of the pairs of points that you want to connect and then just draw lines, right? That. The problem is it'd be slow as hell. Yeah, as I say, that feels like the wrong place to do it. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Oh my god, the fact you're all the way... <laughs> you're all the way into the NVIDIA docs, so oh no. Yeah. It's an extension that adds it. Okay. I mean, it should. There should just be like one friggin' thing that tells us whether this this exists or not. Yeah. Uh, it's reserved for future use. So I don't think we have it. Right. Doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so there is at least one other option we can do for this. Because mm -hmm. we're a little bit bummed that we're getting weird removal of... It's weird, yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to deal with that problem no matter what, come to think of it. Hmm. Right? Because the problem is that for a triangle that is removed... Uh, completely. Mm -hmm. You can't shade on the interior of that at all, right? So if the line gets thick, all you can shade is just the triangle that actually has that piece. And if there's half of it missing, you just can't do it, right? Yeah. So it does depend a lot on... Uh, it does depend a lot on uh, the way the geometry is actually composed. I thought of another problem, by the way. Um, <laughs> all right. Hit me. Yeah. This is not something that uh, the 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 Danes <laughs> discussed. How do I how do I add a page to this? Is that possible? Are you trying, are you? Oh, I thought yeah. you were doing it with your mouse and your computer. So. I was actually. I was like, come on, <laughs> come on, man. Okay. Um, imagine that you have. I saw this on the tank actually. See, we had like the side of the tank. And then we had like a piece that kind of came out like this, right? Mm hmm And um, this edge in here in particular is the one that I'm concerned with. And imagine that that is kind of like flush up against this back, the back surface here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is, a, I think, a problem with the single pass nature of this. Okay. So, what happens if you draw this quad first, or this triangle first, and this quad second? Um, oh, we, we saw this last time, right? This is where that red line may or may not get rendered. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did we see this last time? We did. Yeah, yeah, we saw this on the tank last time, which is like, I think we just, it was like half of them worked and half of them didn't. Oh, we saw it in Slack because we were sort of futzing with this on our own time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think we, I definitely mentioned this in Slack. Yeah, right? yeah. Not uh, on but stream, I wanted to right. call it out here. I, for, <laughs> I forgot that Slack is in the stream sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, but so if you draw the back quad, the back triangle first, like if you, in the order that's kind of like labeled in blue, mm -hmm. that the red line is not going to be there. The reason is the Z buffer, right? Um, the Z buffer is going to be using a strict less than comparison. And so when you draw polygon number two, the red line, like the actual edge that we want to shade with color is going to have the same Z value as the flat surface that was already drawn with polygon number one. And because it's a strict less than comparison on that line, it's going to reject it, right? Mm -hmm. Is this is this where it's just we need to draw with less than or equal to? 
if we use less than or equal to, so we can do that, but um, uh, let me get to that point okay. real quick. Now, what happens if we reverse the ordering? If we draw... What if we did what? What if we did the orange ordering? Huh. We would get the line, right? Yeah, gosh, that's... How would we even know? How do we even know? You'd have to sort your geometry. Okay. Right. Um, which is terrible. I mean, actually, this problem exists for alpha. If, you know how we talked about alpha when you do alpha, like, transparent surfaces? Yeah. You actually have to render them in a separate pass because you need to actually sort them from front to back in order to get, like, the full effect. Well, and you have to sort your geometry. You have to sort it every frame in relation to the camera? Yep. Oof. Okay. And and then you also get into situations where some some pieces some meshes are both in front and behind other objects because they're longer, right? And that starts to hurt your head, right? Or they could they could intersect too, and then it's like really weird. Um, so what if we use less than or equal to, right? So let's do the thought experiment. If you did the blue ordering and you use less than or equal to, we would we would get the red line to show up, right? Because by the time that the the front polygon blue number two drew, mm -hmm. it would draw the red line or the line that's shaded in red currently, and it would see in the z buffer that the z values in the z buffer at those positions are exactly the same as the ones that are about to draw. And if it uses less than or equal to, it would say, "Great, I can draw." Yep. Right. However, what happens if you reverse the order? Oh. If you do the orange ordering, we'll draw the edge with polygon orange one. Oh, then polygon two will actually draw over it because it's. We'll draw the 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 the, the interior color over it. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So I don't think that our friends from Denmark have a solution to this problem because mm -hmm. this is like or, the z buffer is orthogonal to all of this, right? Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's only for this type of like sort of quad attached to a quad situation, or any, uh, correct. Any, anything or, attached or to any a... kind of any kind of polygon ending at exactly at basically the, the same depth as another polygon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Okay. So the solution is to do what we did with the line mesh, right? Which is that we draw all of our interior stuff first mm -hmm. oh and then do a transparent color for our wire solid exactly yeah. so in the wire solid uh for the fill so we have stroke and fill let's let's we can use that we can use that term we talked a lot about terminology today i think stroke is essentially like our wires our wire solid outline color yep and the fill is whatever we're putting into the faces mm -hmm. you'd use transparent black as your fill color for the second pass that makes sense yeah 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 hmm. um and you would use, uh, in the two-pass method, you would use a, a, a less than or equal to method, right? You, 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 uh, right, because the, the, the only thing you're ever drawing is the color of the wire yeah. solid. So you do want to draw over itself if that's possible. Exactly. Yeah. So if we think about it uh, in terms of uh, the, 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 the two-pass method here, um, let me let me draw this kind of like zoomed in, sort of. And again, we are talking about this line here. What will happen is in the first pass, we'll draw all of this stuff, all of the interior, like the, the surfaces mm -hmm. of the solids. Um, in the second pass, we run the edge on, like the Steve shader, right? And the Steve shader is still going to draw the solid surfaces, right? It's still going to do that. But it's, and it's going to use less than or equal to, right? But, so it will actually draw in the second pass um, this line, but it'll also draw the interiors again, right? But as transparent black, so it won't overwrite. Yeah, it won't yeah. overwrite something else. Yeah. So. It's transparent black, so even if this back surface here draws after the front one, it's not going to shade over. It's not going to shade over that because we're using transparent black, right? So it needs to be an alpha. It's not only needs to be a second pass; it needs to be an alpha pass, hmm. right? We need to have alpha blending enabled for that. Um, 
So to flush this out, two pass render, second pass has less than or equal to Z buffer function. Mm -hmm. Fill is transparent. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this brings us back into the territory of doing two-pass rendering, and I think we have to do it. I yeah, I kind of had that in my head already, so that okay, that seems fine. Okay, our, our, I feel like as we, I feel like if we do more optimizations for the renderer, we have plenty of headroom for that. I think it's fine, and we have not, we haven't optimized anything, so like we got lots of headroom. Yeah, I think the two-pass rendering is fine. Um, the thing that I think I want to make sure we keep our eye on is whether or not this with all of its graphical anomalies mm -hmm. we're not going to draw lines this thick but it would be nice to like is it better than the line mesh like do we want to do steep shading or, or line mesh right uh, and this has been the question for the last month basically. yeah I, I definitely i would choose uh steep shading i think it's i think it gives us more freedom and like the line mesh is so tiny and fiddly and like one, one of the reasons why the line mesh was hard to see last time, though, is we were lighting it, and we probably shouldn't have been lighting it. I thought, it, I mean, really, just like I think the one pixel lines just don't read super well either. Like there'll always yeah. be one pixel on the screen, so like our aesthetic is immediately we can't we can't zoom in to fix it because we have one pixel lines. Yeah. Okay. So uh, bear with me here. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and undo a lot of the changes that I made here. Okay. Um, Did you want to switch into line mesh mode? Uh. I actually don't know how to do that. Um, oh, uh, well, it's it's a different preprocessor. So if you switch in the 3D renderer, what it's loading as the wire solid, you can change out for the line mesh preprocessor. Yeah. Uh, let me let me go ahead and like back us out of these changes that we made here. Cool. Because I think this is it's a contrived example, but I'm glad I did it because it's more representative of what we're going to see in real life. We're going to see these little discontinuities there because totally. of yeah. Well, and and the nice thing is as we go forward, we can we can totally modify the assets to avoid yeah. that as well. Like, so it's something here, we here's the around. question though, yeah. is like how, how, um, how thick can we make these lines before the notch problem becomes distracting? Mm -hmm. Right. I think we can solve the fuzziness. Yeah. I think we can solve the fuzziness problem. Right. I think we just need to like kind of think through the math really hard and figure out exactly how to deal with the is fuzziness. It, is the fuzziness just mix? That's what's confusing me. I think the fuzziness is basically what we have to say is that like there is a certain width around the edges that we want to be 100% mm -hmm. uh, the full color. And we're going to like what this what this value is uh this 2.25 value, it's the full range of mix. It's like that's like that's that's the width of the mixing. So in fact, we probably want this number to be like super small, right? Yeah. If you if you think of the stroke as composed of two two parts, the hundred percent color and the fadeaway. Ah, uh, I like that. Right? Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. This is the width of the fadeaway, and the fadeaway is really like. It should be like a pixel's width. A pixel. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. So we I, just need to think through that. I think we can solve um, that for sure. I think so too. But again, I think the thing the thing to keep in mind is that the like let's let's forget about the kind of like cheesy fadeaway that we have right now. The the thicker we make the lines, yeah. the more it's gonna exaggerate the notching problem, right? You can see it really bad totally. on, on, on these surfaces. And can, uh Can you throw the throw the tank back in here too? Okay, yeah. Uh or or the turret, I guess. Either's good. I just called a model model here. I did some refactoring, mm. um, oh, which is why I don't know how to get the line. Gotcha, back in here. gotcha. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you have changed some stuff. Never mind. Fair. Uh, I mean, it's doable. I just needed to take like a minute to figure out exactly how to do it, because <laughs> um, I didn't destroy our ability to do it. Thankfully. Okay. Oh, um, what we want is get models huh? of. 
get GLTF document of the tank. Whoa. And from get models, it's zero. I think that's what it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so just, just zoom it in, and you can make the lines a lot thicker even here. Okay. Yeah, I guess like what I'm happy about is the side faces are great. Like a lot of a lot of this tank is already in a great spot, and it's mm -hmm. really it's really like it's just a couple weird ones. Like this. That's what's cool is you could barely see the edge of the bottom of the cannon here. Yeah, cool, I, I, I don't actually. know why it's like kind of gone and some with from some oh. angles, but you can you can see it in other angles. It is interesting, right? Yeah. That is probably the perspective problem. Because the triangle that uh, this edge is part oh, of weird. is probably so oblique relative to the camera angle that it's just like I the I, triangle is probably like less than one pixel less than one pixel wide or something like that. That's really bizarre. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. But here with again with lines this thick, we can see the notching problem pretty severely. Um, yeah. Totally. But also, if that were done as two triangles, it wouldn't. So like, yeah, like why isn't the geometry just two triangles, right? Yeah, exactly. Is it, why isn't it just a full quad? Yeah, and and I guess I just see this model as something that like has kind of been slightly abused. Now the the weird like uh, on the very back of the tank, the wait, go, look at the rear if you can. Yeah, I feel like there is, and then there's like a um, God, what's the word for that? Not a quadrilateral. I forgot the word for geometry shapes. Anyway, like there's a, a wider at the bottom, shorter at the top with sides going in. And I don't. This one? Yeah. The it, trapezoid. Yeah. It's a fucking trapezoid. I just haven't said that word in 10 years. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I can't think of how to do that with triangles. That wouldn't. Uh, that wouldn't notch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think basically anytime you have. A solid logical edge that is actually composed of two triangle, two or more triangles. Then we have you're a problem. Gonna you're going to get notching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm. I remain pretty okay with that limitation given the rest of our limitations. Okay, because uh, it, it's a good looking aesthetic, and the weirdest thing it's going to have is like some faraway notches. Right. I, I'd roll with it. Um. Okay, so let me at least try to get line shading back in here. We got twenty minutes left. Might as well mess with it. Do um, it. So it's the the try model add edge on is probably your yes. Try model add add edge on is basically the processor. Yep. Um, all it does is it takes a model node and emits a model node. So I, I just changed the design a little bit. Oh, so you, um, so you have yeah. I, I changed the model a little bit because I wanted to compose these models. Uh, programmatically hmm. right um and i think before we were going from like gltf directly into the render node remember that like it was like immediately emitting render nodes and so there's no intermediate thing that was there. that's right yeah and so I, what i wanted to be able to do is to compose a model node with just normals and positions pass it into this add edge on have it run the edge on algorithm over it and give me the model node with the edge on and that's how i made the cube uh that's how i made the cube with the the four quads on each face, mm -hmm. right? It was all just like, we, we, we worked on that code. We was just like programmatically generated. Um, so what we need is actually probably a new shading mode. And this actually changes shaders now, um, oh. which is a little bit of a mixed metaphor because um, what happens if you've made edits to this shader and then you switch shaders? Oh gosh. Great. I think we basically have to remember what was typed in there before mm -hmm. based on the shader mode, right? Um, and that doesn't exist yet. And so this is wi wire solid. I mean, really what it is, is it's wire solid with, uh, based on Steve shading. Uh, as much as I respect Steve, I kind of want to come up with a different name for that because yeah. no one's going to know what we're talking about. Now, is there a descriptive name that we could use? Uh, we, should, we should think of it, but yeah, Steve, Steve okay. shading, I think, should only, should only survive one stream or two. <laughs> right. Uh, wire solid shade. Um, Something like that. Mm -hmm. 
This is confusing. Why, uh, why are you changing this value as opposed to? So um, shaders here is saying like if the oh. if the radio button that's selected mm -hmm. is called this, mm -hmm. so this actually needs to be like wire solid hyphen shader, right? Yep. Is this going to work? I think wire solid shader is a bad name for this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I wire solid is good because we're not calling the other one solid shader either, right? Well, we're, we'll we want to do a line one. A, a, we want to do the line mesh based one, and that's also the wire solid aesthetic, right? Oh, I see. Um, let's just call it wire solid line. Let's just. Let, yeah. And that'll be the distinction, right? Mm -hmm. we call, it a, um, call it a line solid. I think the shader is also the solid shader for that. Um, yeah, because the yeah, because the draw call knows whether to draw lines or not. Yeah, and this code is super confused. Like I, I actually preserved render v two, mm. uh, and I just passed wire solid true. Probably we should have like render wire solid like the render function there because like it's like the code still needs a couple refactoring passes to really clean it up the reason why i kept using render v2 is because render v2 had the whole hierarchical it's got everything rendering yeah. thing that like i didn't want to like deal with again so. no totally um uh this could use some love uh wire solid line uh and we're drawing the model we're not doing the wire solid shader there. I know that's confusing. Uh, I need to add a radio button. Boy, the word wire solid just stopped looking like a word to me when that happens <laughs> yeah is it because of it just doesn't look like a real word right yeah it's, it's like when you start it's for some reason when you start one anything long enough uh oh that last label should have a four wire solid line as well uh, oh yes. 71 yeah perfect thank you mm -hmm. um and then what we do is you render and then we want to render the line version of this Mm -hmm. which means that we have to generate the line model as well. Yep, so it's like load a second one, yeah. So, yep. And this one is. Is there still a function for that? There is a still a function. Oh, cool. I just pulled it into the geometry utils. Nice. Uh, yes, Sweet. try model to wire solid line model. Yeah. To wire oh, solid. So our, our our terminology kind of like lines up correctly. Oh yeah, but that's like. Uh, wire solid line model. Yeah, yeah, totally. It is. Great. Oof. I don't know what happened there. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, I, I see. This is I, I got. I just got jumped over to a different file for some reason. Yeah, but I don't know why. Uh, this is now broke as hell. Uh, uh, I don't oh, think you've saved imported. the file or not imported. Yeah. Yeah, it's not saving. Isn't it's that weird? not saving. It doesn't have. It doesn't have a dirty icon in the menu bar. Cube bottle. The types all line up. Compiled. Hmm. I'm just gonna re hard reload. Great. Yep. Love it. Uh oh, they're the same color. Yes. It should just be black, right? The we should render the uh, solid as black. Yeah. Now technically, we should be adjusting the Z buffer comparison function, but it seems to work if, even if we don't do that, mm -hmm. right? So. 
it'll leave well enough alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see that. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and this is this is lighting, so this is bad. I don't want it to light, so we probably need a separate shader. Um, but if I got rid of the lighting, mm -hmm. I would just say this. I mean, it would just be color, right? Yeah. So a fair comparison between the two shading methods would look... Did that reload? No. What? That's weird. Did I break the reloading? Uh, I, the reloading. I can't imagine how or why, though. Does this look lit to you? Yeah, I think it's still lit. Yeah, these these are brighter than these, right? Ab yeah, absolutely. Um, oh man, even even but, with I the... mean, even even looking at side on, like it does look kind of dim and anemic, right? And that's your problem with it, right? Yeah, like even even with the lighting on. Well, and I I think if we if we have a play field full of objects like this, they're just going to be indistinguishable from one another. Like, yeah, uh, we'd have to use brighter coloring, right? Like, yeah. I mean, make it make it white. Really, really punch it in there. Yeah. It's really not reloading, huh? Damn. Okay. Love it. Uh, I, I don't think it just. I don't think the change registered. That's what happened. Huh. Okay. And now, if you take lighting off, will that work? Uh, it doesn't really matter because, like, um, I guess. Well, it does matter because our, our light is coming in from the side here. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had a, added a console log when it reloaded the shader. Mm, I'm super confused that that's not working, but wh whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just I think it's not. There's not enough here. Okay. Yeah, do do you do you agree or um I, I wish we had line width. I, I I wish we had line width. The the thing I'm curious about I don't know why I really want to fix this lighting thing. It bothers me. But um well we can we can fix it just by modifying the Check shader. Take it out of the right? shader, yeah. Yeah. Oh I renamed the V2 shader the solid shader. Ah, um all right. I want to make a solid snake joke in there, but I really can't find it. Yeah. Um, so it's better. Uh, it's better. It, it, um, it does look very unaliased at this size too. I don't know if that's the case on your side. It definitely is. It's definitely not anti-aliased. Can we do anything about that? I mean, um, I guess the fragment can do... shader can do something. Uh, oh, but it's like line geometry, so it's not like it's going to have anything to interpolate. So oh, what boy. you can do is... Oh, I saw. I did find a GLSL um, FSAA extension, FXAA. Uh, the basic idea is you, you render to a... You render to a frame buffer that's like four times as large as your viewport, and then you scale it down. That's what four times super sampling means. Yes. Uh, that seems really ridiculous, though. Uh, people do it, right? Yeah. Like that, there's that checkbox in your in your video game options. Oh, it totally to, is. To do it, and it looks amazing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the way that we would have to do it here. Uh, is we'd render to a giant, and, and I actually think that we might have to do something. This could be the fact that we're not supporting Retina correctly as well, like or like mm. uh, mm -hmm. what do you call it? Hi High, high, high DPI, DPI, yeah. High DPI, yeah. That's an interesting. That's but this interesting looks question. rough as hell, right? It, it really, it really does. Um, it really looks rough. Uh, so I agree with you there, as opposed to this, which looks nice and clean. Mm -hmm. With, I mean, it still looks charcoal pencily to me, which I don't like. I really want something super crisp, you know. So. What I think we can do is I think we can just roll with this for now mm -hmm. with a laser focus on gameplay, but then like in the back of our minds, we should like improve this, right? Yeah, totally. Because it doesn't feel crisp to me yet. It doesn't feel like our... 
It doesn't yeah. feel like this. I want friggin' this. Yep. A teapot using the Danish method. <laughs> No, I know we're not we're not there, which is a real bummer. So, no. I wonder if these are quads. Like, I feel like they the teapot model. Like the the te the is this the Utah teapot? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Is. Utah teapot wireframe. Oh hey, can I talk about one final technique? Oh yeah, bring it. Oh, that was this one. I think I think they're quads, at least in one of the Utah teapots I found. Uh, okay, yeah. What so is... this is the technique in let's let's actually open this fellow's um, app. I believe you were actually the one that showed it to me first, but I rediscovered it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember sending this over to you as because I was like, this guy is doing it somehow. Yeah, um, there's no edges to remove here, but if uh, we pick a pick a the, different one, yeah. Just just let's do this the Taurus. Or the sphere. The sphere is really obvious. Yeah. So he's d he's definitely doing quads for the sphere, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like there's a bend at all. Like th these are coplanar things. Correct. Um, and actually, yeah, I wonder if there's any quads in these examples. Any, yeah. Anything other than quads? That is, sorry. So his his edge removal algorithm I studied. Mm -hmm. uh, he is doing the same thing as us. He's doing some post processing of the geometry. Mm -hmm. Uh. And his actual way of doing this is is kind of funny. He's basically assuming that every two triangles, regardless of the mesh, form a quad. And so he's just basically saying like every other, oh. every intervening line, just like remove it. I mean, that's, so he's not doing that's any easy. kind of like, he's not doing any kind of um, like coplanar detection or comparing normals or anything like that. He's just saying like literally every other triangle, like every two triangles, the line in between them, get rid of it. Um, and uh, let's see if we can tune this a little bit so that it's not as gnarly looking. And let's like, say, yeah, turn up the thickness, turn off the... Uh... Let's not make it see-through. Uh, the stroke, the background, let's just make the same kind of like... Oh, the fill should be also white, right? I mean, or... <laughs> or make it black to uh, match our uh, aesthetic. Okay. We can, we can really see the... Um... And then uh, the stroke color. Sorry, this is a difficult control. That is a really control. tough controller, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, we don't want it dashed. Nope. Uh, and then effects, you want to turn off the um, squeeze. Squeeze, yeah. yeah. Nice. And make those lines a little thicker, and then we'll be good to go. Uh, it's like, uh, it's the very top one. Looks, yeah. That looks great. That looks amazing. Mm-hmm. This looks phenomenal. So I, I, I think we should just borrow whatever this person's doing, mm -hmm. right? I this is it. Agree. Yeah. This is whatever. Whatever's going on in the shader is really nice. Um. um and, and is now, it is it shader based? Do you, you dug into the code? Is he using just a one? one he's using pass? a variation of Steve shading. Okay. Um. I, I actually think this will notch as well. This is gonna this is gonna suffer from notching as well. But at least at least the the the, the edges are hard, right? Yeah. Um, they're not equal thickness, though, right? You can actually see them double up here. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we turn down dual thick. Is that going to do anything? Dual stroke. I don't know what that I is. I think it turned on and then turn dual thick to something other than zero. Oh, I see. I see that. Yeah. Whoa. We don't that. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so if you turn on, if you turn off edge removal, some of the lines do get thicker. I think. Uh. Maybe not here. Maybe it's on the um, what's what's the default model? Uh, the um, icosphere. Yeah. The icosphere edge removal is really interesting to me because it removes something duplicated. I'm not sure what there he's removing here. Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, this actually is kind of crap e in the sense that like he's like double shading some of the edges and not not the others. Mm -hmm. I don't. know. That's something weird with the geometry, right? Yeah. Um, but by and large, this looks really good, right? Yeah, I agree. And like, again, I think we have to do, I think we have to do some like solid, uh, art direction on our own to make like the shader, the shader what to make the game. What is this? 
I don't know. Hit it. Oh, these are presets. Oh, I see. cute. Yeah. Love it. Take us um, back to, whoa, the fun zone. Oh, yeah. And here he's, he's animating shader parameters, uh, which we haven't done yet. That's fucking rad, cool. though, because we could yep. make a shield. That looks great. Oh, yeah. The hexagonal shield. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, there's another gameplay idea. Yeah. Comes straight out of the graphics. It's great. Um, just going back to this real quick. Um, so Steve shading was, to recall, basically we'd say uh, we assign X, Y, and Z to each edge arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. And then if your edge bordered uh, an edge that was on, you set, or sorry, if your vertex is on the edge that is actually visible, set whatever component that edge com uh, corresponds to to the value one. Correct. Right. So if this was the X edge, we'd have a one over here and a one over here. Mm -hmm. um, what this person is doing here on this website is actually a variation of the original Barry Central coordinate technique that we were doing before. But what's happening instead is, and this is a little bit tricky, um, Barry Central coordinates would be one, zero, zero, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Zero, one, zero, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And it would be zero, zero, one. The yep. new thing is that um, he picks one component on either this vertex or this vertex and sets it to one. Okay. Such that if you do the edge distance, which we define as the minimum of all of the components, mm -hmm. the edge distance along this 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 edge, uh, this entire edge is going to be non-zero for the entire length. And now let's think about that, right? Look at the X component. The X oh. component is going to vary from zero to one. Look at the Y component. The Y component is going to vary from 0 to 1. And let's look at the Z component. The Z component is going to vary from 0 to 1. So what he was trying to, what he's trying to do here is to make sure that every single component has a non-zero value along this edge. Oh, because this is doing the, the inverse version too. Um, yes. Can you remove two or more edges this way? Probably. Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, how would we remove a second edge? How would we remove this edge here? Um, well, which which of these components is going to be zero the entire length? Ah, uh, right. So the, you have to just put something in the y value of one of those to remove that edge. That's clever. Yeah. Cool. But not both. Yeah. The but not both. Yeah. Yeah. I I think you would put. I think you could put it on one or the other. I right? think I think this is a thing. I, I I remember attempting this, but I think I tried to set it to one on both sides. Uh, and it did not work. It was nonsense. But that's so, clever and makes yeah. a lot of sense. That's cool. The, I love it. Here, the edge distance is non-zero except when we're near the vertexes, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we're near the verts, uh, you're pretty close to zero for at least one of the one of the things. So I, I, I still think that if you use a shader to do this, you're going to run into the notching effect no matter what. Same problem, because the... The notching comes from the other triangle, not from this one. Not being exactly. able to draw the rest of the edge, which totally makes sense. Exactly. And yeah, we won't get notching for the line mesh, but we just can't draw those thick lines, unfortunately. Yeah, it's... I don't think it's worth it. I feel, okay. I feel like we're so much more empowered by having this and the ability to shade the rest of the model with something else if we want to, like throw throw some noise on it to show that it's damaged i mean i guess we'd be rendering the solid anyway but i i like this I, this just feels cleaner to me and i i think we'll get a nicer aesthetic out of it the thing i kind of want to do is um email the guy who did our turret yeah and say like how did you do your graphics that's a great question and if you just chose like a shader we would at least ask him like what shader did you choose you know well but it probably involves a geometry shader uh or yeah i mean that's the thing is that like it, uh there's so many things you can do with the geometry shader uh, and that's probably what blender is doing and, and assuming exists yep right yep yeah i assume i i assumed his example came out of unity and he had like already passed it through some off-the-shelf thing that does it right uh yeah i mean and he could be like a art art slash programming genius but i'm guessing he just chose the the, the, the material from a drop down somewhere yeah. right or like he's a little of both <laughs> yeah um i'm gonna kick... we should email him anyways yeah we should i'm gonna kick that guy some money too because uh yeah. i wasn't quite sure that, that model would stick around but it totally is yeah 
Cool. Uh, what do we even do today? I think we just talked more about shaders, right? And, and, and how we have our work cut out for us. Uh, yeah, but I, I think we've also sort of agreed that we're going to do the shader this way. Yeah. And if we, I think, yeah, I think maybe next stream we commit it uh, and bring all our stuff into GLTF and start like going to town. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think also on the docket is to do the, see if we can do, see if we can add the two pass rendering technique to the shader based wire solid technique. Again, we need to come up with a name for that. Uh, it is the wire solid fragment shader version. Wire solid fragment shader. Oh, right. Cause we're, cause we have to do As opposed too. to the line mesh version. Yep. 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 I mean, it's the wire solid shader version, even though that the even though the line mesh version has a shader, you know, shader based wire solid rendering. Yeah, shader edges. Ooh, shader edges. This is shader edges. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the edge shader. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice, fantastic. Mar nice marketing. You did it. <laughs> You know, the names will matter in the long run for, for our day-to-day -day sanity. Oh, I'm not mocking it. Yeah, no, 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 it absolutely <laughs> will. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are now graphics programmers. Uh, this is the same wall that probably millions of graphics programmers before us have banged. Uh, as, have banged as I say, have, have crashed upon like waves. Uh, yes. I know, I know I have at one point or another, so I'm actually shockingly confident in our ability to uh, do this now. And two months yeah. ago, I had no idea. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So I guess we get our models into the new into the new world, mm -hmm. um, and then we also try to uh, get two pass rendering going, so we don't have that issue with edges that are right up against another surface. Yeah, and and let's think about it in terms of like, or rather, let's also think about how to optimize the renderer so we're not sending like one draw per model. Maybe that's a between streams thing, but. Yes, I feel, uh, I feel like as soon I as we do, I looked into that a lot more. Okay. Uh, over the over like the last couple of weekends and uh, nightmare it's not, or yeah, it's not a nightmare. Uh, it is fussy and uh, it is not as ideal as we want it to be. I remember uh, on Damn. on the stream that Steve was uh, was last on, we talked about whether we could reduce every render pass into like one exact draw call. Yep. Uh, we can't really do that. However, we can make every mesh a single draw call. And so... Ah, instead uh, of like seven for the tank? It would still be seven for the tank, but if there are five tanks, you'd only have seven draw calls. Ah, okay, yeah, that's great. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah having a, a constant number, I'm super down with many constant numbers of draw calls versus yeah just... it's basically every mesh that you have loaded and are deciding to render no matter how many times they draw in the scene no that's great uh, that, that that's a, a huge improvement uh because yeah. it's a it, yeah it's basically you're dividing you're dividing your number of draw calls by the number of repeat instances mm -hmm. of the same model right yeah well and, and importantly we might have who knows how many of that but we will always have like 10 models so that feels yeah. like we're feeding the gpu in the correct way yeah, that's correct. Cool. All Excellent. Right. Sweet. Uh, really love seeing that SIGGRAPH logo. I haven't seen that in a long time. It's just, yeah, right. Um, and, uh, I find SIGGRAPH to be intimidating. Every time I've read a SIGGRAPH paper, I like did not understand it at all. I, so I have that imposter syndrome. I remember as a, as a very young lad, there was like some SIGGRAPH that was in at the New Orleans Convention Center. And I was like, oh, cool, computer graphics conference. And then I tried to like read something about it. And I was like, I don't know what any of this means because I was 12. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be like cool video game shit. And it was like this stuff, which is actually cool video game shit, but I had no idea. Yep. Anyway, that's my only SIGGRAPH story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Thursday will be our last stream for two weeks. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Aw. 